I'd like to welcome everyone here this morning for participation in our second Partners in Digital Productivity Forum with a theme on the four pillar industries. And this morning we're obviously focused on the importance of the tourism industry in the in the state's economy. So as uh, some of you would be new to this forum, um, we did run our first forum on agriculture a couple of months ago. But the reason why we're organising these forums is very much to try and build closer linkages and collaborations between these two important industries in Queensland, between the IT industry, which my group is involved in, and the large tourism industry of Queensland, which Paul's uh, division is responsible for. And that's mainly to try and increase the level of awareness um, and confidence levels within the tourism industry and other pillar industries to be able to confidently embrace and adopt new technologies and digital services to help raise the productivity and the profitability of those businesses and ultimately achieve the strategic objectives set out in their plans and grow jobs in Queensland. This is a digital event. We uh, have a number of digital social network platforms that we would encourage people to subscribe to and uh, be able to be kept up to date with what's happening. Um, my area has the Digital Economy Queensland Facebook and Twitter and YouTube sites, and then Tourism has the Destination Q site. Now, for those that want to participate live this morning, we also have through Twitter um, the Go Digital Queensland um, site that you can actually uh, tweet during this morning's sort of presentations if you choose to. But I would encourage you, if you're not signed up, to sign up to those sites to keep abreast of what's happening. I just want to say a couple of words about um, the context of this morning. Um, our department is currently working on finalising a digital economy strategy for the state. We did release a draft document late last year and got quite a lot of feedback. We had something like 18,000 web visitors and almost 100 submissions to the actual strategy document. Very importantly, the vision that we're uh, alluding to in our strategy, as you see it there, is that Queensland would be Australia's most digitally interactive state and recognised globally as being a digital innovation hub. One of the challenges we face in Queensland at the moment, and if you're in the tourism industry, in particular if you're in regional Queensland, is the fact that just over 20% of Queensland households are not connected to broadband. Um, and still a low proportion of Queensland businesses, just over 40%, actually have websites in which they can promote their business. And so one of the challenges that we're trying to address is how do we lift the levels of participation, particularly by unconnected Queenslanders, as we need to address more and more government service delivery in a digital context. So that's a big challenge and we're, we're looking at a number of action items in the strategy for that. But very importantly also is this whole notion of the world is our stage, and in digital, startup digital businesses are born digital businesses, and there are huge opportunities for uh, our Queensland businesses to explore international opportunities through our global connections, and for Queensland to be recognised as a hotspot for these new solutions and uh, digital technologies. And then we have three strategic objectives. The second objective is very important to this morning is that we want full business participation and full, business and full community participation in the emerging digital economy. So we need to lift the participation by business and part of one of the table discussions this morning will be about that as it relates to tourism. Um, I'll move. The four dimensions that we're focusing on are people and communities of Queensland, the business and industry sectors in Queensland, particularly the four pillar industries, obviously tourism being one of those. The role that our own digital industry should be playing and could be playing in the growth and development of the industries and the economy. And very importantly, um, my associate director, General Andrew Speed, is here today, and one of the major initiatives that we're driving is this new one stop shop initiative, which is basically a, a, a much higher level of delivery of government services in, by using digital platforms and digital engagement, a digital first approach. My final slide that I just wanted to allude to this morning before I, I pass over to Paul is, so why, why is all this important? 
Well, we know, and you would obviously know because of your participation this morning, that digital technologies are rapidly evolving in the world. If you look back five years ago to where we are now, it's almost impossible to conceive what, where we, we're going to go and where we might go in the next five years. And this creates a real dilemma for a lot of businesses as they decide what to invest their limited funds in, 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 in terms of their digital business platforms. But it also causes great disruption to many industries, tourism industry being one, at the same time creating opportunities. So at the forefront is this concept of increasing productivity, and this is what these events are all about. It's about how, how we can basically increase the, the outputs and the sales of the industry through a reduction in you know, expenditure and levels of input from the businesses. And there's a lot of studies around the world that show that for every increase, every percentage increase that a business, uh, the, the business sector take on as far as digital platforms in their business, it has a major impact on the uh, economic growth rates of their countries and of their regions. And importantly, there's an interesting study down the bottom there that often it's said, well, digital is disrupting the economy and people are losing their jobs because of digital. But a very important study by McKinsey's Global Institute Club about two years ago highlighted that for every job lost in the traditional economy, there is emerging up to 2.6 jobs in the new economy, in the information and the digital economy. So one of the reasons why we're organising today for this discussion between the two industries is to say, well, how do we actually, how do we actually take advantage of some of these trends and how do we actually turn these words into actions as far as collaboration between the two industries. What I would like to do now is um, invite Paul Foreman, who is the Deputy Director General of uh, the Tourism Division in the Government, to uh, give us uh, a, a keynote overview of the industry and in the major issues that are uh, being addressed by the, the Government and the industry. So Paul is responsible for coordinating the whole of government activity and response to tourism issues. He's chair of the Tourism Interdepartmental Committee and he leads the Queensland Government's Destination Q initiatives. And I'd, uh, I'd like you to welcome Paul this morning, please. Ladies and gentlemen, can I start by thanking you for coming today? We know that you've all got businesses to run and your time for and the fact that you've taken time out to come here today uh, to talk about the opportunities between tourism and ICT is fantastic. So this is, we really appreciate it. What I want to do today is just talk a little bit about uh, the journey we've got to get here, some of the challenges and also some of the opportunities. Last year, we asked uh, participants in our Destination Q forum to give us the top five words that they wanted the Queensland tourism industry to be known for in the long term, the positive words about what we, what we wanted it to be. And we put that into a word all. And it's really interesting, the largest word there in the middle is innovate. And we went throughout the state to every destination and we talked to tourism operators about the challenges of the future. And we commissioned CSIRO to actually do a report about what's coming out of the horizon for the tourism industry. And they identified seven what they call megatrends, the big shifts that are going to shape the future of tourism and indeed many other service sectors. And look, it will come as no surprise to you that digital whispers was one of their key uh, megatrends. They basically described a world where there are, where visitors and potential tourists are using digital channels to make their travel choices. So there's much more information in the hands of consumers. Consumers are so much more powerful. And the potential, and this is the digital whispers play on Chinese whispers, is that if firms don't manage their engagement with that social media and that digital world, they have the potential to have their reputation harmed. The opposite side of that is there are opportunities for tourism operators. Traditional distribution channels where you go through a travel agent or a wholesaler are, are being broken down as mixed in. So operators have the chance to link directly with consumers all around the world. So that, that opportunity is also matched with risks. And as we went around the state and talked to operators about this report and about what it meant and about what they needed to be in the future, many of them landed on the need to be very savvy digitally 
and to actually use technology to change their businesses. But what I want to say is that I recognise that there are many other aspects to a successful tourism business, and nothing is a substitute for the one-on-one -on -one with, your, with your visitor, uh, with your passenger, actually making it a great experience. But digital was seen as something that could help. When we think about the statistics about what, what, if we want to look at digital uptake in the tourism industry, what does it look like? I, I suspect that the best thing to say is the picture is a bit mixed. So, some of the statistics, um, what we know is that 62% of international visitors come into Australia uh, using this net for information. And I suspect it's very much, very much the same for domestic visitors as well. 20% of tourism operators don't have a website which, given those two things, is a really interesting uh, dynamic. Why not? Well, they were too small, too time poor, and too expensive. And these are their self-reported results. Um, less than half, or 46% of tourism operators with a website offer instant confirmation of booking, and with only 70% uh, being able to accept online payments. And I suppose in a world where people, they'll just click through website after website after website, if you can't capture that uh, they visit up when they come to your website, you could potentially miss out on job opportunities. Now, a lot of terrific work has been done to help the industry to start to reverse some of these changes. Tourism Events Queensland has run very successful digital wedding programs across Queensland with their digital coaches uh, to try and encourage operators to sort of move in that direction. So it's not like the, 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 the need for this is not being recognised. The Queensland Tourism Industry Council has a prize for innovation. It's broad innovation in terms of product and technology, a range of things. But the industry certainly recognises the need to keep up with the times and be, if not ahead of the curve, certainly at it. We asked industry about their vision for the future. What do, you, what do we need to be to be successful? The strategies we use to achieve that might change from time to time, but what is it that we need to be? So the vision that the industry came up with them, which was endorsed at last year's Destination Q4, was that our operators were technologically smart, connected and efficient, doing business better and reaching consumers in new and innovative ways. So, this is ambitious. They weren't setting the bar low, but they were clearly saying, this is what we need to be to be successful. They identified a couple of major things that we need to do if we're going to make that mission work. And that's basically ensure our digital capabilities are ahead of the pack, and maintain a visibility in the global economy. So the industry clearly understands the importance of digital technology and its role, the role that it can play in linking us, linking us with our visitors and things from that experience. So what's the purpose of today in getting you all here today? Well, from my point of view, today is about bringing together the tourism industry and ICT providers. The tourism industry has needs that need to be met. The ICT uh, industry has solutions that may be able to meet those needs. So today is really about saying, well, giving everyone an insight into what tourism needs, um, making connections. Now, the reason why making connections is so important is that we know from research undertaken by the University of Queensland School of Business that the Queensland tourism industry is innovative, and in fact, slightly more innovative than the rest of the economy. But what we also know from other research is when tourism firms innovate, when they bring new ideas into their firm, it's usually done in a very informal way, and it's usually done on the basis of informal networks and connections. So today is an opportunity for us to sort of supercharge that process. So we want to identify the needs, we want to make the connections, and hopefully today, somewhere amongst these tables, there's a need and there's a solution that come together. We're not here to you know, commission blue sky research that might yield something in 10 years. What we're hoping is that there are already existing technologies out there that could be applied in the tourism industry in different ways. Maybe solutions that you haven't even thought of, or applications that you haven't even thought of. And at the bottom there is fundamental objective here is to increase the growth of the tourism industry and to increase the profit of our operators. Um, this is not an idle exercise, We're not, this is not a chattering in class, you know, we can all have a cup of coffee. We're here to see what we can do to have our industry become more profitable and to grow. And obviously that is about providing the best possible visitor experience. So that's the objective for today. So the questions I suppose that we need to put to you are, how do we use technology to drive yield, efficiency and profit? 
Now, there's two ways we can look at that. The first is customer facing. How can we connect better with our customers and potential customers and enhance their experience? The second aspect is about how we can improve the way our tourism businesses operate internally, our processes, uh, our functions. The two things are not mutually exclusive. I don't want to pretend they are. Often, uh, a technology or a change that helps us deal better with visitors also makes our business more efficient, or vice versa. But we want to sort of use those, if you will, as two organising categories for today's discussion. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a panel session uh, with three interesting speakers that Paul will introduce in a moment. Their job is to stimulate discussion today, to talk about some of the needs the industry has, to talk about some of the solutions, to really help you to get uh, yourselves in a space to think about some of these challenges and opportunities. In your tables, we can have uh, two breakout sessions. The first session is going to think about that whole visitor interface. And so it's about what do we need to do to improve our visitor connection and experience and what solutions might be out there. What we're going to ask you to do, and there's paper, or just paper on the table, is there any good workshop. Um, we're going to ask you to think about that, come up with some ideas. What we want you to do is identify your top solution that could be applied in the tourism industry from each table. Well, we're going to ask someone from the tourism industry to report back on that. Now, um, there's a slight apartheid in the uh, badges today. White is for ICT, blue is for tourism. So what we try to do is to make sure each table has a nice mix of blue and white. Because it, there's no point the ICT industry talking in abstract about what the problems of the tourism industry are and vice versa. So what we're going to do is ask someone from the tourism industry to report back. Um, we're going to ask you to write them on small pieces of uh, uh, sticky notes. And you have an elaborate technological system as a group to express your preference. It's called sticky notes. And we're going to ask you to identify on a sticky note, out of all the solutions that come out of the tables, what's the one that you think has the most potential? We're going to repeat that process after what you see around improving the business operations for tourism firms. And again, looking for solutions out of the tables and looking for you to help us identify the top solution. But what's important is not only what happens today, but what comes out of today. So a couple of things we're going to do. You're going to get a summation of everything that's been discussed next week. So you're going to have an idea of all those solutions uh, and, and ideas. You're also going to get a list of who's come today. So if you've made a connection and you really want to link in with someone, that's fantastic. At the end of today, we're going to, we're going to have a lot of top solutions and some ideas to take forward. You're invited, if you want, to join a working group to take those forward. Certainly from the point of view of uh, my department, Tourism Events Queensland, the Department of Science and Innovation, we're going to be looking at how, through our partnerships, we can take those ideas forward, and we're really open to that. And what we hope comes out of today is more of those connections between ICT providers and tourism operators that lead to those ideas that actually can help the industry lift its productivity and lift its profitability. So that's how we sort of want to uh, approach today. And as I say, it's the start of a process. What you say today doesn't get lost. It gets taken forward. It gets taken forward. And as I say, very keen uh, to hear what you have to say in your tables, uh, and certainly where we'll be taking this away, and Queensland Tourism Industry Council will as well, from an industry point of view. Um, and again, thank you so much for making your time available, and uh, enjoy the panel discussion. Cheers. What I would like to do, perhaps, uh, by way of introduction, is ask each of our panellists just to give a short introduction to yourself, your business, um, before we get into sort of a, a question and answer session. So, um, do you want to start off there, Brendan? Uh, thank you. Um, sorry, I'm not used to talking to microphones. I do talk a lot, but not to microphones. Um, Brendan McKenna, um, I'm General Manager of Base, uh, Base in Brisbane here. Um, Base Hostels have just over 800 beds in Brisbane across three properties. We're a backpacker youth um, company. Uh, we have 14 hostels across Australia and New Zealand. Um, including bars, retail travel operations, and uh, job search. Um, I'm also chair of uh, Venture Queensland, which is called the Backpacking Queensland. We have 172 members across uh, Queensland, both uh, multinationals right down to mum and dad operations, 
um, out around our Northern Stand North and, and um, those sort of areas, and also chair of the Backpacker and Youth Tourism Advisory Panel for uh, ATEC um, on the national body as well. So. Hi, I'm Uli Kretzler, just recently accepted a position as Professor of Tourism at the University of Queensland, so I am going to move to Queensland in the next couple of weeks. I'm currently still in Wollongong. I uh, do research on uh, tourism and technology, um, specifically social media related research, uh, but also I work with a lot of computer scientists on uh, developing um, recommender systems, mobile apps, um, interactive tour guides. Uh, so my research is really about how people process information, how they make decisions, and how technology also encourages them to share their experiences and and uh, dream about their vacations. I'm Eric Skinner. I'm the owner of Paris Escape Rainforest Retreat in Montville. Uh, we're one of the micro-businesses in the tourism industry. We've got six cottages um, in Montville and Sunshine Coast. And uh, I'm probably one of those, the mum and dad operators that came into the industry uh, as a bit of a retirement plan. Um, having said that, I did come, originally I did come from an IT background or an engineering background, um, and we developed the business as a, as a semi retirement type business into a genuine business. And um, we recently took out the Australian Tourism Award for hosted accommodation. We've been quite active in the, the, the digital space, and thanks to um, Tourism X Queensland, in particular in the old days, uh, for putting us on that path, and we've seen the, the value and um, benefit that can come from engagement in, in digital tourism as well as traditional travels. Um, I'm also chair, uh, deputy chairman of the Sunshine Coast Destination Limited, which is the regional tourism body on, on the Sunshine Coast. And, and our passion is to get that regionality addressed, to get our small operators into the digital space. So uh, I'm, I'm very pleased to, um, to have so many ICT representatives. I'm a little, little bit disappointed to see not so many tourism representatives, and uh, hopefully we can turn that around. Well, I'm, I'm surrounded by some tourism experts up here, and uh, I'm the uh, representative of the IT industry, and uh, my particular firm is a major consulting business, and, and so I work with other businesses to understand how you can exploit and leverage uh, IT and uh, make all the decisions necessary to get an investment out of that activity. Um, and I'm also really up here on behalf of the Animal Lab, and amongst you there'll be uh, you know, a whole range of IT providers from major consulting firms like myself, um, IT, um, solutions and product providers and people who can help integrate the solutions. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll do my best to speak on behalf of everybody there. Yeah, like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. That's much appreciated. So maybe if I could just kick off the first question and properly address it to you, Brendan. Um, be interested in your views and the panel generally um, about how tourism products and visitor experience could be enhanced through the use of technology and tourism businesses. Do you have some relative examples of, um, I, I don't think it's how it could be enhanced, I think it's how it is enhancing the experience. I, th I think at a necessity, we're actually developing it now as you see it. If you go back even 5, 10, someone told me yesterday Google's only invented in 98 and the iPhone's just turned 10 or something like that, or, or the smartphone. Um, if you look and see what's around us and how we're going now, the way people are communicating, um, Back when I was with Sheraton and the casinos, I remember we used to put our postcards we were sent home. And now we, in, in our business, we actually have a little iPad that the, the kids can go on and they can actually send 30 second voicemail message to the parents at home to say, Hey, Mum and Dad, I'm here in Brisbane having a good time. This is what I'm doing. And they're a little clippy on the side of my face and then Brisbane itself. So we actually, we we're tracking that. That's instant time. The way they're communicating is now, is here and now. Um, we're seeing facial recognition come in across properties. We're seeing um, backbones being built within our, our businesses and, and we're working off a, a cloud-based system where someone might check in with us in Brisbane and then they're moving up to Magnetic Island or Raleigh Beach and our reception staff members making their reservation right there and then and actually getting all the details and that's leading up to reservations along with their requests and what they want. And, um, back when I started in the late uh, uh, account by trade, that's was quite upset that I stuck with those cells. And probably, uh, but in the late 80s, we were doing Ritz Carlton. It was very, you know, managing our guests right across the world. It was all through telex and faxes and all this sort of thing. And computers were just coming into it now. At the few clicks of the button, I can transfer this guest into Auckland. No problem at all. And service and keep them in our network and distribute them throughout our, our great um, economy. So I think it already is working. Um, uh, 
things that we're looking at at the moment, we're actually looking, developing a concierge function into our hostels. Okay. Went to a backpackers and sort of concierge, but it's where they'll have iPads. They'll let a mate tour looking through their iPad. They'll then check people in, check them out, make comments on the property management system. They'll get an interface with that key locking system into our rooms. These are these are things that I think you know. I, I know you, you see this generally in one of four five star hotels. But these are filtering to the youth, and the youth are the big adapters of technology, and we need to be at the forefront of it. We need to know what's coming on in the next three months, because apparently three months is an ITU. So, um, so, so, so things like that. But then from an operations perspective, enhancing it, we need dynamic pricing. We need the, the mum and dad operates a little B and B's to be able to have access to, to get their pricing and dynamic pricing models out into the general marketplace. And, and that's just why I come back to websites. You know, I, I'm probably the distracted out asking our websites relevant thing now and today. You know, Google searches, Facebook accounts are searched, these other sort of stuff. I think, and don't get me wrong, I'm not like see so much, but Bing and all those other search engines, that, that they search the whole web for things. So, so the question I've got is, if websites were traditional or a or must back then, are they a must back now? And then going forward, social, digital media, fantastic. But how do you put a value on it? And, and that sort of thing. So um, I think enhancing the customer spirit. Uh, just one thing that I've got is um, traveling with Virgin um, and Qantas now, you've got the iPads. On the thing, I think like Virgin, you can actually blink in and do it. And Qantas has got the iPads there. Who do I see to try and get an economic solution to put that above a bunk bed so it's, I guess, come and put their headphones and watch a movie or Netflix or TV? I don't even get Netflix here yet. I've got a US IP address. But, um, but, but yeah, how do we do that and enhance that customer experience for the guests? Why do we need a big, boy six inch TV there? And then when they walk into our venues or our, our, our rainforests, they, they, they get here, yeah, download this or listen to this. This will tell you about that beautiful tree that's there or Springbok Creek or the heritage that's there. How can they adapt to those? Um, but those, those are the things I think to hands. Some of the things. I don't know if other members of the panel would like to share their views on that one too. Mark. Um, I totally agree with you, Damon, with, um, with what you're saying about um, when IT is already there and it is enhanced the customer experience. Um, we're going through a major refurbishment at the moment. One of the challenges we've got is we're looking at what do we put in? We put in, um, we've already got iPod docs, but they don't work anymore because we haven't an iPhone 4, and now we've got an iPhone 5, so we need to update all those docs. But there's a whole legacy issue there with the iPhone 4 years and so forth, and now you've got the, the Samsung, uh, the Galaxy that are coming on. So you, you've got the, the complexity of, of providing solutions is, is one of the challenges. And uh, what we're finding is that um, simplicity is really the key, the biggest innovation that, that's come to, or the biggest. Um, so enabler for, uh, for customer experience is the provision of, of Wi-Fi. That, without doubt, is the biggest benefit that customers receive in hotels. It's our number one demand, particularly for international guests coming into the, into the area because they can't afford to use uh, local data services. And, and that's, so therefore, it's, I did a bit of research on um, what sort of TVs to put in. You've got smart TVs, you've got connectivity. There are TVs putting Apple TVs in so you can use your own device to stream. They all become incredibly complicated. If you look at your own home TV system, the time spent to program that to run your your iPad and your Sonos soundbar and that particular TV and in the other room, it's it's tailored to your system. We can't we have, we have trouble teaching our guests to use the remote control on the DVD player. <laughs> if you put a complex system in, it, it's wasted on the majority of guests that are coming in. They're actually after easy, simple technology, um, free Wi-Fi with simple access, you don't need to find codes, find the concierge, buy time, all those sorts of things, is, is a massive benefit to, to the guests. That's one that we've, um, we've, we've enhanced and that we've, we've um, embraced and have given to, to guests at not an insignificant cost, um, but at but a huge customer experience benefit. Um, and, and therefore, um, it's about those simple things to make things work. Um, even. We, we looked at putting iPads into it for our guests, but most of our guests actually bring their own iPads. So if I come to a hotel, I don't want to use their iPad with their apps on it. I want my device, whether it's a MacBook or a PC or an iPad and so forth. So I do want a charging cable, though, because <laughs> uh, they're usually the one thing I've, I've got to bring with me. So so having something where I can have available a range, you can probably break that down to four or five charges you can have. Have that available so you can charge your device. We have got free Wi-Fi. The, the basic things quality TVs and all those sorts of things. I agree with you with the, um, the, the phone idea for, uh, or the 
the streaming idea for me is we have a DVD library of 400 DVDs, but they've got to physically come down and take a DVD out, and that does seem so old school. Um, at home, I've got them all on Plex Media Server, and I can just dial it up and uh, and run it. So I think I'd like a simple solution where I can take my 500 DVD library and make it available to all of my guests when they want it preferably on their own device if they want it. So uh, there are some, some opportunities there you have. But I think certainly the, the white liability is uh, number one. Um, yeah, I think there's incredible opportunities for personalization. Um, I'm not sure if you heard of the KLM example of how they used Foursquare to identify where the frequent flyers were and then search their social media profiles um, to look at the preferences and then suppress them with a little gift. Um, so there's um, uh, definitely a marketing opportunity and also an experience co-creation opportunity. Uh, I also think that uh, RFID technology is really something that we need to watch. A lot of the European ski resorts are using that technology extensively um, to create a seamless experience for their customers when they come to these destinations. Um, so you don't have to have a, a pass like in the old days anymore where you, you know, open the gate uh, to the lift. Um, and then also I think um, uh, we have a lot of unticketed events or attractions uh, and uh, satellite imagery, for example, is now so uh, detailed already that you can use facial recognition software, that you can use um, computer algorithms to identify license plates even um, for uh, events to know how many people actually come to your event, to your attraction. Um, because that's definitely data that we didn't uh, really have before unless you had someone standing there and counting people. Um, and, um, um, yeah, context-aware systems, um, knowing where your customer is and uh, supplying information, um, that is incredibly important. Um, and then also having the things, the Internet of Things, uh, having your gate at your campground, for example, uh, being... Um, able to open. I've worked with a, an RV um, campground um, reservation systems company uh, where people basically make the reservation online and then they drive up uh, to the gate and have a QR code or um, uh, on their mobile phone and just open the gate and drive up to their spot with them. So. Yeah, look, I, I completely, as a traveler, I agree with every, every one of the, uh, the points you're making. I think there is another element in terms of the customer experience, and, and that is the engagement level as well. So there is so many different mediums by which you can engage your community of, uh, of clients and travelers out there, um, whether it's through social media or other means. And the Tourism Australia campaign is probably one of the best examples of that, how they gain so much momentum and so much free publicity, effectively. But in addition to the free publicity, it, it actually made uh, the clients or you know, the travellers to Australia have a more complete experience and able to share that with their friends. And, and that was largely for free uh, because they hit on some great ideas. And, and so whether it's simple things uh, like asking your clients how they'd like to be communicated with, whether it's through an email, which is probably the traditional way, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Twitter, um, simple things like messaging them before they're, they're due to check in to welcome them the next day and whatever it is, there's lots of simple little things as well using the available technology platforms that are out there. In addition to the, the, um, the, the sort of bigger um, technology-based solutions. Um, so there's a whole range of different approaches I think can be taken and it's all about um, growing the customer experience and making it more holistic for them. So, so one thing I just add is, is it's, it's about a partnership. It, it's really things on a supplier buyer sort of field. It's a partnership when, when we as businesses um, work with, with IT to have all companies or suppliers, it, it's a partnership because we need to succeed. And, and near field communication, you just mentioned there with door locking, and that's, it, it's, it's massive. We're currently playing around with, a, with, a, with an online checking that'll work with near field communication into the rooms. So we just spent a couple of dollars and upgraded one of our, our, our properties to near field communication with the locks. Um, and, and then with this check in line, so, so some people will do that. A mice set up a mice operation, a, a, a hotel that relies a lot on that meeting incentive convent, convention or a large corporate property may like that. I'm flying back last night from Sydney, so the number of people just walk past, tap their Qantas card, those little sticks that stick out there and walk straight through and away you go. 
those things are coming into that technology. We've got to adapt to those guests, but it also means if we can, we've got those guests that want that service, those other reception staff, um, guest service agents, concierge, they've got more time to work with our tourists coming through to try and increase their length of stay, to get them out to see the sites, the destination, and spend more money in our destination. Technology is better enhanced, but the big thing is to get out, talk to not just one operator, but talk to a number of operators that understand their business, who their customers are, and the mix of their customers and what they want to enhance the customer experience. So it's not a one-size-fits-all. It's a big thing. Following on from that, then, um, Brendan, one of the things which I think is a challenge for a lot of independent businesses is weighing up the costs and benefits of the different options that are available to you with a limited budget to operate with as independent businesses. So how do you go about that sort of decision making? And how do you actually measure like the benefits, the realised benefits from these technologies and new services that they can bring to business? Yeah, yeah, good, good, good question. Um, a lot of times not very well, honestly. Um, it's come up a lot. Some of our sites, we have one major you know, website for, for all our hostels. We don't have the digital websites. A lot of our bars, they were independent, but a lot, most of them do not have websites either. Um, we will use other digital social means to engage in activity or look outside to do that. Um, Facebook is a perfect example. I know in, in, in the food and beverage industry and, and that sort of stuff, we, that sector, we, we looked at, well, what value is Facebook to you? How do you measure it? You know, I've got all these likes, but all these likes come from a, a little place in Mexico somewhere. Um, I'm probably not going to get too much business out of that. Um, so, so, so it comes back to measuring is very hard. You, you have the traditional means where you put a voucher in something or a voucher on a thing and they come in and show it to you. And, away you go. and, I, and I, I think it's very different for what it is. It's generally trial and error. Is what we invest. But the, the big thing though is, is, the, is the backbone of it. The hardware installation, whether that's a Wi-Fi installation of the backbone installation is something we're stuck with. That's a fixed hard cost business can't move with. If it's software or technology or something, we can invest in it for a finite period of time. Uh, a month, two months, three months, give it a good crack, see how we go, try and measure some data principles, be very clear on the outcomes we want out of it. Um, and, and that's a big thing leading into before. But the, the, the hardware, the backbone, I think most of us in the tourism business, you come to us with an idea, we'll marry up. We're, we're, we're pretty open to give it a crack. We really are. We're, we're pretty adventurous sort of people. Um, um, especially if you have it's, it's in the social environment. But, um, but, but what it comes back to is hardware backbone costs are the big things that, that, that we struggle to get our head around. A lot of the panelists. Mm-hmm. No. Uh, I, I agree, but it, it's very hard to measure the, um, the success of these measures because a lot of them are intangibles. Um, in terms of, as I said earlier, we, we put Wi Fi in it at not an insubstantial cost to put the backbone in. Um, when you look at a lot of hotels that are scared of putting free Wi-Fi in because not only is there an actual physical cost of the installation, but there's a loss of revenue because Wi-Fi is a, is a revenue source. However, I think that the, um, the, the reputational damage that can be, or the reputational um, benefit that can be achieved by having a free service um, should not be um, discounted. And it's like the old telephone system in hotels. I don't know how many, how many people made a, an in-house phone call on a on a um, pair of in a, in a hotel mall, but I suspect it's probably, I uh, count on one hand, so that the revenue from, from, phones, from phone calls has, has disappeared. And I think it's the same way that re- revenue from paid Wi-Fi in hotels is also very much a, an endangered species when you've got McDonald's down the road and Starbucks giving it away for free. So it's, um, the, cost, the cost of not providing it is, is, um, is probably more, more damaging than uh, the uh, cost of giving it away. It can be me- measured in terms of the... Um, online engagement and is the engagement when you've got Facebook likes and so forth like that. When you have actual engagement with customers, with staff, with your own hotel, um, you can you can definitely see that the benefit there and that that's quite measurable in terms of um, you know, bookings in, in our hotel's case. So I think there's a there's a way of measuring but it's certainly it's it's not a precise science and it's it's fairly intangible but um, there's real benefits there and uh, I encourage it. Just touching on the Wi Fi, I, I think that's a big thing in you know, our youth market there. Their, their data, data leeches, you know, they, 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 they've got torrents running 20, 20, 28 hours a day and they're just sucking things up and down and, you know, left, right and centre, it's incredible. So, 
for, for us, you know, and why follow for our businesses here in Brisbane. They were a, they were a six-figure revenue stream for us. Um, they're now probably lucky to, 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 to crack the anything. Um, if anything, they're a cost to our business now for what they were. And this goes just a couple of years. And this is just the decision by the Brisbane you know, City Council to, to put in free Wi-Fi everywhere. The State Library, you, know, you come here at 2 a.m. in the morning and there's backpackers sitting out there and new students who are here and studying in, at, at the universities or in colleges. Um, and they'd be out there plugging away and tapping into the internet. And here we go, hey, this is good, we've got free internet. So they'll travel for free internet. It's there. We currently offer $4 a day or $12 a week for unlimited internet access. And that's with um, that's with 512 up and down, which is pretty good. So, um, and, and still then, it's still not sure if it's viable, but the problem that I got a $15,000 bill in January because some little guy came out to plug in and, and he separated, he built his own little mini, but the guys went down and got a router, they plugged into my system, they, they put a router in there in the hostel room, and they, and they, and they started, you know, um, all feeding off this, this, this one, uh, off my Wi-Fi, and, and suddenly I had this nice big bill coming from Telstra, which is lovely. But, um, which negotiate. Thank you, Telstra, if anyone's out there from Telstra. I love you. Um, but, um, but, um, but, but, yeah, I think it, it, this is a big thing about the free Wi-Fi. It allows us to communicate. Our, our, our travellers travelled by word of mouth previously. Now they travel by word of mouth. It's just moved. It's still there. They won't go search a, a website or a Facebook or, a, or whatever. They'll talk to their friends about, oh, I stayed there. That was great. Go there. So it's, it, Wi-Fi is important, but it's just you've got to help us with the security side of it more so than anything else and how we lock it down and, and how we can move it. So I think it's, it's good. Wi-Fi is easy to put in, but then ongoing management of it can be very confusing for small operators. You uh, should have recruited those guys in your business somewhere and... Uh... <laughs> They've got to come up with some innovative solutions for your best. Yeah, no, they actually might be doing some um, online stuff for us. Direct benefits, yeah. yeah. Look, I, I'd just like to add it. Um, yeah, the return on investment, I think, can be challenging to uh, to quantify at times. But I think there's an important lesson there, which we find in, in every business that we have outlined. And, um, and it's true of many of the failures that have happened for companies, whether it's Kodak or Borders, whoever it is, but in moving to digital economies. And, and it's a, a lesson of capability development, right? and the trial and error nature of what you're describing is, yes, you can quantify a lot of these things, some things are hard to quantify, but uh, as you develop capabilities, then uh, it'll get easier to get the outcomes of business outcomes you're looking for, but you may have a few challenges along the way. So um, so starting small, I think, is an important thing, and then, and then building capabilities as you go. One more thing, I think it's also not just the investment in the technology, the costs, but the uh, maintenance and upgrade. And a lot of uh, operators underestimate um, that cost, um, especially if you look at a Facebook page. Well, it's free, right? But uh, if you don't do anything with it and if you don't have people who actually create content for you, um, then that's really not a good investment. It can actually hurt you. So, Ollie, I'm just going to stick with you and, and your experience. So one of the... Um, challenges and um, targets that Queensland is aiming for is to increase its international tourism intake, obviously. And we're reading daily, weekly, about the importance of the China market and new airline routes, etc. I'd be interested in your comments about Chinese tourist characteristics and particularly from a digital engagement point of view, how they differ to European, American characteristics. Maybe you could just share some of your experiences with the group leaders like. Well, I'm absolutely amazed by how different they really are, and I'm learning new things every day from my uh, Chinese students and my Chinese collaborators. Um, just think about the whole um, Chinese culture. First of all, social media for them is really where they can express opinions. Um, that's their platform where they talk. And then you have this whole new generation of Chinese that uh, really don't have siblings. The one-child policy uh, means that Chinese um, now have to connect uh, with other people uh, through virtual communities. And they do that. Um, and they would rather do that uh, virtually than um, going to a bar and hang out with people and, and talk to people there. Um, they ask the way they um, talk on these social media is very different. Um, it's um, it's um, high interactivity, like high frequency 
uh, but also high creativity. Uh, the Chinese language is so different. It's uh, uh, not only phonetic, it's, it's also uh, uh, picture-based. Uh, you have the characters. So there's a lot of different uh, ways in which you can play with language um, on Chinese social media. And uh, they really are dependent on these technologies. So when they come to a place, um, and there's no Wi-Fi, um, they actually get scared. Um, it's a security blanket for them as well. And I think we see that in millennials as well. I've taken students to uh, eco-tourism resorts in Costa Rica where there was no Wi-Fi and no electricity, actually. And they panic. Um, and this is something that with the Chinese, we have to understand that uh, uh, they are so much more advanced in the mobile technology. They laugh at me when they see my mobile phone. Um, and they have Wi-Fi coverage everywhere. I was in national parks in China um, at 4,500 meters um, elevation, and uh, you have Wi-Fi access. Um, so coming to Australia, uh, and they do more and more uh, come as independent travelers, um, they have needs for information, they have uh, expectations, and uh, um, some of my colleagues even found out that they increasingly rent RVs, caravans, uh, to drive around Australia. So now you have the stereotypical Asian driver in a huge vehicle um, who has never been um, to this country and is driving on the wrong side of the road um, and has no access to information because they don't have Wi-Fi. Um, I think that's a very scary thought. It's another dimension on the old British backpacker Brits rentals market, isn't it? Uh, yeah, look, I can't say I'm a, a cultural expert in different uh, global cultures, but, um, but if you do look at websites, and I think websites' purpose is definitely changing, and... Um, uh, then even the website designs in different parts of the world are very different, right? And, and it's a response to cultural differences around the world. And, uh, and I think there is an opportunity potentially there in hitting these targets of, uh, of creating different hubs or platforms that can attract these different cultures. So, um, for instance, the Tourism Australia, the Tourism Queensland Facebook platform, um, it's really a one-size-fits-all uh, environment. Uh, but it's likely that, um, for instance, Chinese uh, versus Australian versus New Zealand versus whoever actually want a different online experience. And there's probably a need to have some different platforms that target these different uh, target character, target markets. Yeah. But I think there's an opportunity for the industry, whether Australia wide or Queensland. Just touching on the website thing, yeah, one very interesting thing, like I think what more put up 20% of businesses don't have a website or something like that, of course. Um, how many of those 80% then are actually optimise the mobile devices. You know, I, I guess so you probably find less than half are actually optimised for mobile because they're built on the cheap maybe 10 years ago. Uh, or quite tended, something like that. And one huge fact in that is that um, Booking.com, I'm not sure if maybe you know, have had a bad year last year for mobile sites. It only grew by 160%. The year before, it grew by 200%. So it went from 2011 to $1 billion on mobile sites to $3 billion in 2012 to $8 billion last year. Percentages, to mix the words, but it grew by $5 billion last year on mobile, so mobile devices making booking for booking.com. That's an amazing jump and just shows how people communicate. So it's not only the websites, people don't have websites, it's how they're optimised now to communicate with the changing traveller and the traveller's needs. And, and absolutely. Like the latest data in relation to online commerce, to you know, transactions, payments online has grown in Australia by 60 odd percent per annum. So if you're not on that train, you're sort of missing out on a, a, a key revenue source. I'm going to ask just one last obligatory question of the panel, um, and then we might just open up to a couple of questions um, from the floor. The, the question basically is what do you think? I'll start with you, Mark. What do you think can be done to build a stronger link in Queensland between the ICT supply base and the, the tourism marketplace generally? Where do you think some of the opportunities might be? Uh, well, I think forums, I guess, are a good sign. Um, trying to connect the industries together and uh, connect individuals together and the sharing of ideas, I think, is very powerful. Um, and and I would 
to say from my point of view, being on the IT supplier side, a clear strategy and direction um, that we're seeing the tourism industry pursue. And, and uh, so I think that's very clear with the goal targets that have been set um, by Tourism Queensland uh, and then a strategy underpinning that problem and something that I rally around I think would be a helpful uh, tool. And, and I do see that um, opportunity that I mentioned before of having whether it's a platform or something to rally around in terms of a driving, a driving force for the industry. The tourism industry, in my view, is probably one of the most um, diverse industries in terms of the number of players and the, and the variations in scale of those players and the extent to which they operate together and uh, with agency relationships and so forth. And, and there, if there's one way of, kind of creating a rallying force for that, um, and I think there's been some very small examples with, you know, as I mentioned before, the Facebook platform and so forth, where people can get back on. And uh, then I think it's, uh, it's a good focal point for everybody in terms of objectives and uh, a good place where people can jump onto and tap into traffic. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Nice, yeah. Sure. Um, one, of the, one of the differences in the tourism industry that most other industries is, like you just said, it's, it's diverse, it's small, and it's regional. Um, you all have big tourism centres, uh, Gold Coast, Cairns, Sunshine Coast, which Sundays are all outside the capital cities. ICT tends to be in the capital cities. And even, even at the forum here, there's a, there's a uh, as I said earlier, there's not enough tourism operators here represented by the industry because they're all over the place. That, that, that's the challenge, is, is getting getting that technology to remote location. That, and by remote, remote, I just mean outside capital cities. Um, and dealing with the um, even the access issue, there are a lot of tourism operators that just don't have access to high-speed internet. That's the, the biggest failing. They want to be engaged, they want to, they want to be part of the digital world, but um, not able to because they haven't got that high-speed access. So it's, it's getting that access platforms, working out partnerships that can work in region, and um, regions will work together to bundle and, and work together, but we need to have solutions that, are, that can, can meet them at their, at their workplace and their media, at their um, destination. Um, I think tourism is one of the uh, industries where you do not have a research and development kind of culture, unfortunately. Um, and uh, I think um, ICT companies are not used to that because in other industries you definitely have that. So there's not a, a natural contact point. And there's also um, uh, maybe not uh, <coughs> really an, an opportunity um, right there to um, understand immediately um, who the people are that you should talk to because you can't talk to these um, individual operators and a lot of uh, ICT companies don't understand uh, that there is destination marketing organizations or you know, regional uh, bodies. So I think it's, it's a structural issue. I also uh, see because I work with IT companies a lot uh, that there is a, a notion almost that, oh, I travel so I understand tourism, so I don't need to talk to the tourism industry. And uh, I see a lot of uh, startups out there actually creating tourism related applications um, that I think are, are great ideas but would be even greater if they had actually um, talked to uh, tourism operators or uh, tourism bodies. So those are the two things that I think. Yeah, I'm very regional. Queensland's especially, you know, it's the only state that I travel to nationally on the international and on where I've got so many operators that actually aren't in the capital city or in a major rival access point. Um, RTOs, LTOs, those local industry networking events that they run become members of those RTOs, the LTOs in TTNQ or Tourism at Sundays or Sunshine Coast, whoever it is become part of them, attend their network and get to know the people there, get to know the diversity of business and tourism. So it might not just be someone who supplies accommodation. It could be someone who's, who's got a pub or a fish and chip shop or a local you know, rubber duck tour down there having a catching a micro and a fish or something. You, you, you never know what opportunity there, but it's those functions, those, 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 in, those industry organisations that are there for council, generally set up by council for that sector. And the other one then are the associations that might be there. You know, you, you've got QTIC who King's here, and I'm pointing her out, so she's probably going to don't, don't know and bombard King just this week. If you've got questions, but QTIC do a great job, and they, what they do is they bring they have the Industry Associations Council for Queensland, they bring a lot of my sector venture Queensland together with Caravan and Camping Taxi Association, um, the uh, Timeshare, 
the Holiday Letting uh, Management Rights Association and our restaurant caterers and, and numerous others. And we sit around the table every three months and have a chat. Um, that, 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 that they're great points to disseminate information to members, find out what the, the campus or the RV guys want in theirs and, and, and what they're looking for in their services. So look at RTOs and then the industry associations that uh, both exist and don't get any individual members because you get one sided or you just get told where to go. So don't be about it. So thank you. Thanks very much. Um, got time probably for one or two questions from the floor. Um, so, a question over to the left hand side of the room. Thanks, Lisa. Noel Shannon from Progress Software. I guess the underlying question is are you trying to drive up occupancy rates at a reasonable price? I'm actually trying to drive up not only occupancy, but yield. That comes back to link to stay, and that comes up to me reinvesting in development. So it's an numerous things I'm trying to achieve. If I can, if I get a guest that comes to me, and I can get them to go on, sell them a forex ale house tour, or a trip to go to the quiet line pine, I get extra nights accommodation out of it. And I get economies of scale, because I don't have to go and change all those sheets, I don't have to do a full service on the room. I don't have to check them in again, I don't have to make another reservation, I don't have to check them out. So I'm getting cost economies of scale coming in. So, Occupancy is only one thing what I'm trying to achieve. If I can achieve customer satisfaction, get service, those I'll increase my yield, I'll increase my occupancy, I'll do new things. So to me, it's only one thing I'm trying to achieve. Excellent. And the follow-on to that is uh, we've heard a lot about how uh, the young tourists, etc., are, are really digitally savvy, the Chinese are digitally savvy. Have you considered actually running some form of events or something specific to those people? So. You know, making your backpacking centres the place to come because we have our rapid application development uh, seminars or that sort of thing. I don't have to travel for a seminar and that sort of thing, but they're, they're, they're engaged with the technology while they're here to do things. Back home, let's communicate down there, the latest song from Beyonce or something. Um, that's what the engagement is. It's not so much we've just got to have the access for them to do that in a simple Easy and, and why they can they can just connect and engage with it. I think. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any thoughts in terms of Ministry about leveraging off gamification kind of uh, technologies because that is potentially the way of engaging. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay. Comes to a whole other thing. I've got no idea what gamification means. So, 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 so this is nothing. When you talk to us, you've really got to go. You know, there's a great thing for someone just to liaise with all, all these. Technology, you know, what's the difference between Cat 5, Cat 6? What's the difference between uh, an optic fi- or, or, or a black fiber and an optic fiber or whatever? I think I got told that each of our properties here, I got told one could have one fiber, but the other property couldn't, and maybe they're in two blocks apart because of not upgrade cat copper in the line or something. I'm going, what the hell? So now I've got two different pipes coming into to, to the buildings that are in two blocks apart, and, and you know, that's, that's it, that's in the center of our capital city. That, that's pretty scary in some respects. Um, but, you know, I understand that may not be for this room, it might be a few years, I'm sorry for the person who's offended. Um, but, 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 yeah, it, it's a really big thing that when you can't talk to us, you can't talk to us in all this jargon that's out there. And, and, and you know, we work really well in acronyms, which too much, actually, but, and you probably do as well, but I would not have a clue of gamification this way. That's right. Well, uh, uh, I, think, I think you answered the question, but um, for, the, for the Gen Ys, I think, those sort of things may be attractive, so I'd be happy to talk to you about that. Gamification is where you're all right. I mean, so if your backpacker has got more users that week than the other guy, you know, might be trying to just take. It's like a, it's like a game, so you know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like playing basketball. Yeah, exactly. I mean, would, I like, yeah, so an example of top nation would be, um, say, uh, the engagement that um, travelers have online in a, in a social media sense, in creating some sort of game around that where. Uh, major tourism sites around Brisbane, for instance, they could go and, and check themselves into those sites and they win points and they're on a scorecard and all those kind of things. Uh, so it's a very simple example, but there's lots of emerging examples out there and it's the sort of thing that Gen Y's really engage into. Yeah, no, no, I, absolutely. I, I know that because I come and drink in the bars or they, you know, you don't have the bar and I get in front like they used to four years ago. But, but, but we, we looked at actually with base um, back in 2008 creating a game as a marketing tool. Um, we did take it any further. The cost of development was pretty excellent, that sort of stuff. Well, yeah, the, 
Yeah, I, I, I think that's right. I think uh, the cost, coming up with a good concept and then the cost a little. And I think this is where it's more of an industry, uh, potentially an industry challenge as opposed to an individual company challenge. So the crowd attraction around travel is coming to the state. Well, I'm very conscious of the time because we are um, rapidly moving on this morning. So what I'm going to do now is call an end to this part of this morning's uh, proceedings on the panel. What I'd like to do is particularly um, acknowledge the contribution and the import into this morning's process of our panellists. So, Brendan, Philly, Mark and Mark, thank you very much uh, for your input this morning and your value uh, expertise in helping us consider the two questions at the table. So now we're going to move to. So, what we would like to do now is we'd like to move to our first um, table discussion period. Now, we're allocating about 45 minutes to this process. Um, as I said, you are able to get up and grab yourself coffee or tea and bring it straight back to the table. Um, for the first half hour of this process, we'd like you in your table settings to consider the first question or challenge that Paul posed to us at the beginning of the day, which was, how do we use technology to connect visitors and enhance the experience, the tourism experience in Queensland. So what sort of changes are needed to connect with visitors and to enhance the experience of them in Queensland? What sorts of possible solutions could be applied to meet the needs? And in your view, what sorts of organisations um, could be involved in trying to address the opportunity that presents itself? So. At your table, there is a, a table captain who will guide proceedings. Um, please brainstorm the question to begin with. And then what we would like is at the end of, and I'll probably give a five-minute warning, um, so 25 minutes from now, we'd like you to crystallise your discussion into your one best idea or proposition that tourism industry person at your table will present um, back to the forum itself. And then we will put those ideas up on the white on the, on the whiteboard, on the concrete wall, and, uh, and vote on those during the morning tea break. We probably took a little bit different stance. So we didn't see the one big idea was actually a physical piece of software or something rolls out, or it's a driverless car, or a driverless bus that takes it through a national park or something like that. We actually figured that actually it's an engagement destination was our big idea. Because we need engagement within destinations themselves, not just in Brisbane and not just in a state or a nation or whatever. It is a destination. And that'll lead to things like open source systems. So making sure that the system that you develop can talk to the system that the other person develops. It can talk to another system another person can develop so we can get all this data into one application. I think dynamic pricing is important, global distribution getting our product out there to the world um, it is massive. Um, at the moment, you know, we've, my business spent $350,000 on a system that we built in-house that are actually get us in, get us, you know, in, into um, Amsterdam, into a retail travel agent there. And you can get last minute, last availability pricing for repeat investment here at Gourmet. So global distribution, dispersal, comes back to destination, how we can disperse people around, um, out into our properties, out into our products, take care of the food, wine, tourism, um, agritourism was mentioned at our table, those sort of things. So dispersal, how they can connect. Connectivity, a big thing. Um, so Wi-Fi mobile, you go to uh, to Bullia and you can't, your SIM cards don't work, your phone doesn't work, Strabro Pilot apparently, your mobile doesn't work. So we know apparently, there we go. Um, but we saw, if we can bring solar technology together in, in the lights that are in, in the rest stops, how can we get it plugged in a Wi-Fi router that goes out somewhere and gets up so if my um, mother and father-in-law are driving through and father-in-law wants to sell some shares on his iPad or he has a cup of tea while my, while my uh, mother-in-law talks to my wife about you know what, what, what the kids up to and that sort of stuff. They can do that from a rest stop in you know, somewhere between Serena and Mackay. That's great. You know, and that, and that's, so Wi-Fi connectivity works across all governments. And then geolocation is the big thing. When they go in, they get on that Wi-Fi, they get on that SIM card, it tells them what's happening in the region, what events are on. Um, um, where I can go to do this, what I can do, but then the geolocation is only as good as the data that's going into it. So how do you manage that data? How do you uh, make sure it's current, it's relevant, and it stays up to, up to speed and get that? So our, our big idea 
to start with was just engagement and ongoing engagement between technology and tourism on a regional platform. Um, we, we tap it from a more fundamental level. Um, I'll tell you what Raymond says is engagement. It's the hard, the hard task, and it's the, the regionality dispersal of small businesses and how do we get them on board and into the, the new digital world. So um, we decided we'd use technology in, in various forms um, as an educational tool to target engaged operators in each regional, in each RTO region, so in the Gold Coast, Sunshine Coast, Blue Sundays, Cairns, etc., to find those, um, those, those ambassadors for, for the industry. So find the ones that are actually doing good stuff in the digital space and this online social media. Um, use those, support them so they can develop dynamic pricing tools, social media tools, um, distribution tools, um, all those sorts of things. And actually use those, those members and uh, the engaged operators to encourage others to, to do the same thing because it's, it's all right for the government to come out and say, I'm here to help you, but um, the take up's probably not so good. But if we can find those operators within each region who are doing great things, and um, they will be only a carrot for other operators to come on board and learn what it is that they're doing. Um, we'll talk about how do, we, how do people know that they're doing good things. What we did mention was that the, the tourism industry is such a, particularly in the accommodation side, is such a transparent industry because you can go on a lot of the body side of the booking.com site, you can see where your hotel is and you can see that I've got 10 rooms available tonight. But my next door neighbour is fully booked and they're fully booked and they're fully booked. So what are they doing? So if we can find those operators and give them the skills and tools and, and make sure they can uh, uh, share that with others and uh, encourage them to come on board. So get the, get the information out to the regions or to the um, remote destinations as well. That's the big thing. Um, so we uh, were thinking that there's a lot of information uh, that gets uh, published about the tourism businesses online. Uh, so one of our ideas um, was how do we uh, make it uh, more readily available so that industry can tap into all of the discussions happening about their business, whether it's through social media, uh, whether it's through user reviews, or whether it's through uh, the websites uh, that as guests are looking at through the free Wi Fi that gets provided by the hotel to actually bring that back into some type of a, a central place uh, that then can produce uh, reports or information for industry to then turn it into uh, something that they can learn about their business and begin some type of an improvement, whether it be um, a new or fixing a particular service issue or putting in a new type of coffee in the restaurant. About is a really fundamental issue in tourism, and is the um, shape of the industry and the fact that 95% of businesses in tourism are small and medium sized, and that presents a whole lot of issues in terms of rate of adoption of technology. And anybody who works in a state tourism organisation or a destination marketing organisation like Alistair from Gold Coast Tourism here recognises that there's limited. Um, limited access and engagement by businesses because there's so many small businesses out there and their knowledge, education, their rate of adoption is all hampered. In a lot of cases we know because they're just dealing with running the business and their productivity is um, all focused on that and being, being hampered by that. And there's a lot of other things they can do to bring themselves up but you can't actually get them engaged. It's a real struggle. So we don't recognise a problem in the lack of technology. There's plenty of go around and proven technologies that larger businesses and destination marketing organisations and tourism events, Queensland kind of organisations can use really, really well. And they're very proven, but it's getting those small businesses to recognise and take up. So we recognise adoption as the key problem at this table. We talked about the way that collaboration and creating a movement in a destination, a little bit like Mark was talking about when he was on the stage and what the QTIP's doing and TQ does, is um, a very viable way to get um, small businesses engaged. And we've got to focus on that. Investment in collaboration would be really good. And, you know, there's lots of actors around collaboration. This is really strong appetite to do that, like creating this forum today. The government's got a really strong appetite to bring people together. So we think that that's a good place to start because there's enormous agreement around collaboration. Then, how would you do that? Though we need money to do that. There needs to be, um, there needs to be purpose to it and there needs to be money to it. The purpose is about um, getting those 
the, the understanding of, of adoption and why it's going to be valuable to them and what they can try. Um, but then there needs to be a funding bill for that to make it happen. Otherwise, it's just going to happen in really fragmented ways and we're not going to maximise the intent that's there. So we're suggesting that there needs to be dedicated funding for it. Funding for, for different projects would be based on case studies. There's plenty of those in the industry. You, you build your business cases and test the return on investment but make it all really relevant to small businesses, really strong small business folks because this is about a direct outcome of adoption by small businesses. Um, what we imagined it might be is something like the Go Digital Queensland Innovation Fund. And we think that would be something that there's, there's so much, you know, thought leadership around that kind of, uh, those sorts of concepts that that would be quite doable if you had the right kind of facilitated leadership around that to make it happen. There's a lot of weasel words in there, but if we just say that the, the real focus is about solving the problem of adoption by SMEs and that would answer what the industry said they wanted, which was to put them ahead of the pack. Um, I just wanted to say that um, most being covered by us as well. So one of the points that's probably a little bit off topic that Mark from my house mentioned was maybe we all need to change our perception of the, of the digital economy because it just is the economy and maybe we need to think about the way um, in terms of our budgets, etc. that we just don't think of it as something that is just an operational space, um, like capital expense, it's not just our ongoing operational expense. And from there we went off on the whole tangent for a while. Um, but essentially, we spoke about similar things in terms of, um, I think, if we had to choose one, the Wi-Fi option was a big one, but really using that, not only to go for who it is for everybody, but what data are we getting from it so we can continue to enhance the user experience. ICT consultants in the one around Wi-Fi have been saying that we obviously need that one-on-one -on -one discussion with the two of the business to understand what their needs are. The problem is that costs a lot of money. That mum and dad turns not very into business if we don't have. So we need to find another solution so the ICT industry can really be brought up to speed with what the tourism industry really needs in terms of digital technology. So we thought about starting an ICT tourism digital professional expert group so they can really identify and match what software works for what subset of the industry. I was using the example that um, holiday apartment managers will not be able to work with such and such online booking system because it needs to integrate with their trust accounting software so they don't have many opportunities or many options. But what we need to do as well is um, regionally, we've got some of them um, regionally, the ICT guys in regions are not the ones that have got the best ICT skills. They're generally John Smith, web developer down the road, that's been using Dream, Dreamweaver for 20 years and is still selling Dreamweaver websites. So we need to upskill the local IT guy to understand what the ICT industry is about these days. But we also need to develop these destination champions so that operators can learn from one another. We can't always fly in an ICT professional from Brisbane that's got all the expertise that may be required. So that first group, ICT and tourism consultants, could be working online together on some LinkedIn groups, for example. And the destination hubs, we really need to upskill not only the one operator's um, operators with workshops, but upskill not the local ICT professional to be able to answer those questions, or also people in the LTOs or local tourism organisations or regional tourism organisations, as well as visitor information centres, to become that first point of contact with the operators and we'll be able uh, to help or at least direct them with their digital economy questions to the right person. We've had a bit of a 360 um, here on this table and we spoke about Wi-Fi and um, looked at the value and the costs of implementing the digital component. So we took a step back and said, okay, the main um, support needed would be maybe for the smaller tourism organisations. And because there's hotels on this table, we thought, okay, how can hotels actually support the smaller guys? And we came up with a bit of a marketing idea that will also enhance the um, customer experience and looking at a social listening tool. So. Um, someone books at a hotel and we know they've booked with us, is there a tool where we can socially listen to them and say, we're coming, 
we're here at Brisbane, um, where we want this and this and this. And although we do that over the phone, can we continue to listen to them over the next, if they're booked within three weeks in advance, and then our concierge will say, well, you know, there's this happening at the Gallery of Modern Art, or there's the koala bears, or, you know, how can we then communicate? So we're supporting tourism, but we're also enhancing the experience from a hotel perspective <coughs> as well. So how do we do this digitally? Thank you. Um, we've sort of had a round conversation, a bit like everybody else's, I guess. Um, the, the first thing that we did, we established as tourism operators, our main priority is for technology to reach our customers and to fill our beds or to, to bring the, the dollars in the door. So basically, we, we started off just talking about how the priority is that we work together to get uh, a stronger tourism business. It's so we looked at the physical connectivity and the issues around regional areas. And from an IT industry, we want from you to make the connectivity work. Um, a bit like the con uh, what we were talking about earlier, that, that the, you know, the guy down the road has a different sort of IT setup to what we have. And, and to make that broadband um, Wi-Fi access available for everybody throughout Queensland, which is one of the main issues. Um, we also talked about having localised websites so that what we felt that um, we're talking about in China, uh, China language, interpretation, those sort of things, but that's true of any of the cultures and just to be culturally aware, if you are the whatever market that you're marketing to, then you're actually culturally aware when you're designing websites and, and perhaps having to have specific websites or accessibility so that uh, whatever market you're going into, that you're actually culturally um, the second area we went into is exactly what Fabian sort of talked about, about the trust and um, the trust between IT options for operators as well as um, how the, the, they get access to the tourism operators. And we talked about things like, like um, was mentioned in the panel discussions about maybe some IT people coming to some of the networking functions to create awareness because a lot of tourism operators are bombarded by the regional solutions and um, they're not necessarily the right ones for the businesses. So the $20,000 website may be great for some, but why is that better than the $2,000 website you know, as an option? And, and there are a lot of people out there making bad decisions that, that um, leads to a lack of trust with the uh, IT industry. And I guess that's something that we can probably all work on here in, in terms of um, just working together to try and break down those barriers. In that, we decided from a consumer perspective and from an operating perspective, the most important part where we really need help is in that digital pre arrival experience. And it was back to that whole point. Some of our, some of our guys are uh, two years in the plan on their estimation, some are actually a day out. At the point that they make that decision as an operator, what we really need to be doing is personalising both our operator content and all of the free and open data sources and putting that into an automated system that doesn't require me at an operator level to have an extra one or two staff members in their system in that monitoring. But as the consumer, I get the email going, welcome, that's fantastic. You can know, it's been raining, it's going to be raining for the next two weeks, and that's on me. It's something is so how can we use the systems of your ICT and make that work for us right back down so it doesn't we'll pay for it if you can give us an ROI on it? And we think that that's a huge way of building trust too to get your champion operators to start to connect. So we've gone really, really micro to say that actually starts to make a difference to your consumer, which starts to make a difference to us in the systems end. Summarise it quick summary around the nine tables um, from the point of view of voting. We've got a broad engagement, open innovation platform concept here at this table. We've got the concept of regional, a regional focus learning from the best regional sort of champions, ambassadors. We've got a need for much more information, open information and information availability um, from the customer perspective as well. We've got a 
challenge of increasing adoption uh, and benefits for small business operators. Um, what is your economy? Is it that your economy? I think it's probably not probably a little bit of that. I'm going to We've got the issue about um, the interface between the ICT, that uh, sort of thing, tourism, the ICT industry, and the digital tourism expertise in forming an expert group, and definitely the need to build ICT capabilities in regional areas. So it's just not a drop and fix of the service. It's a really value added service. Seven was a more dynamic platform, a social listening tool, um, to shape opinion and decisions for tourists pre and post arrival. Eight was this issue about website, I mean, websites, cultural, recognising cultural differences. The last one is um, personalising information, more open data, um, more, um, how would you say, more um, automated. So, we all have. system, there seems to be um, three ideas that are, well, two ideas that are strongly supported across the room here this morning. This concept of the Go Digital Queensland Innovation Fund, I'm assuming a tourism innovation fund or a general innovation fund. Um, obviously a lot more thought and thinking is required in terms of that idea in terms of its, um, its scope and its, um, its focus, etc. That's what we're doing post this forum. Um, and this idea here, which was on the last table we reported in relation to the digital pre-arrival personalization, open data and access business model, which is very strongly supported by the ICT industry people in the room. This is equally supported by ICT and tourism people. And then there appears to be three equal third runners up. Um, information availability, Wi Fi access to this table uh, over here, to this table. Um, micro firm solutions, experience networkers with local stakeholders, digital champions. Um, This one here, which was about utilising the experience of successful tourism operators in the digital world, regional. So, in many ways, these two aren't too dissimilar, to be honest with you, I think in terms of the general direction of thinking. So, it's our job beyond the forum to try and crystallise these into a, a, um, a readable format that we can distribute to yourselves post the event today. And we'll talk about what will happen after we go through this next um, table discussion period. Uh, so our, our idea is based on uh, an insight that uh, a lot of people will be trying to work with as are running tourism businesses rather than IT businesses and don't have the knowledge to make decisions about the systems or the solutions or even knowledge about what, what, what they actually want in some cases. So uh, we were talking about uh, providing a support tool for businesses um, that would provide them with some educational systems uh, and perhaps a TripAdvisor style rating system for IT services uh, that would become a community for the tourism industry to go to and find out about who could help them with various IT services. Or another one, I was just saying. One of the challenges we consistently find, but it's not going across, we've got about 5% of the tour operators who are really good at what they do, and they think digital. There's the next 10% who are fast followers, and they wait another year and they will follow through. And then you've got the rest of them, 50 to 75%, who just possibly you know, will follow through in a couple of years, but there's a bottom half almost 50% who just do nothing. Um, 
one of GT's one of the programs that really resonates well at least in the vocals to as a model is GT's put together the visual coaching program. The biggest challenge you see is getting operators to just understand that technology is important and adopting the technology. Uh, half the time people are not going to be adopted. Uh, who is that friend who we can, you know, or, or someone that has an expert who we can talk to just say, well, what do I need to do next? So, we've suggested here an expansion of the T2 digital coaching program with more mentors supported at the regional level. Uh, at the end of the day, think of yourselves as business owners. We don't know everything. Uh, especially when it comes to technology, we don't want to take care of the customers, we don't want to take care of the experience, but we do not know the technology side of it, social media, trip advisor, uh, you know, uh, mobile websites, responsive sites. It's not an easy thing to get. So that was our suggestion. And we had a number of discussions about our ultimate solution, um, and please, Jason, jump in at any time, was a Queensland um, Tourism Payment Gateway System that all operators could sign up to. It could be run by Tourism Events Queensland. It could allow bookings um, to come into one gateway. So that the operators, it could also be its own supervisor tool. Um, it could provide reports to those individual operators that were providing those reports. It could also locate areas of a lot of activity, perhaps a at this point in time, we're going to send um, some people out there to talk to you more about digital. I think we just wanted to close the loop from the payment gateway through the analytics and feed those analytics in a usable way back to their tourism operators. So they might like get they might like get an EDM say once a month with a summation of, of their bookings and what I'm saying well, that seems to us. Most of your operator, your customers book on a Thursday. Maybe you could try it as um, Our happy idea was the uh, stem from the fact that there's a lot of data um, with those small and medium operators. There's a lot of uh, duplication of data entry and so forth. And businesses are generally at a fairly low level. Um, we, we would um, like to give operators and industry slash government access to open data through through such system. I'm not saying talking about. Um, with a business system, so perhaps linking um, online travel agents with um, software providers for accounting and business functions. In an open source system where the, the, um, the cost was low to the operators, so hopefully we get some, some decent take up. And then that, that information would then become available to um, the tourism bodies, um, industry bodies, to, to provide more meaningful data in terms of um, marketing decisions and where this are coming from, where things and growth is happening. So basically, providing Feeding off the, the live data that exists in, in this environment to, um, to generate marketing information to help uh, better, better promote the regions and, uh, and the area. We started with the idea that probably um, the biggest single improvement would be by automating the lack of assumptions in businesses so that staff can't be out of the need to be dealing with the customers. We then into a conversation about how we do that with a lot of small operators who don't know what systems to buy and build a lack of fitness and how they can invest in those and certainly can't afford to do that many to fail. And then from there to the idea of the Google Apps type thing and ended up with the idea that we could use an open source reliable dynamic cloud software platform that end users could then add apps to as they need to. We pretty much need to um, improve the digital skills of these businesses, but digital is not sexy enough. Productivity isn't sexy, so we're going to enhance the work-life balance and create a big campaign to do that. What we normally don't do in the tourism industry is work, work with large ICT partners, but they have the money and they have the interest, so thanks to the guys around the table, we have decided we're going to hit the big ICT corporation and telcos um, with a project. They'll be interested in small business. These guys are going to market the spring team back of house campaign that's going to be run in the uh, off-season for the tourism operators. We're going to talk, and that campaign is going to be directed to our industry champions. Through um, the ICT working group that I talked about earlier between these small ICT partners and the tourism digital specialists, we're going to generate interest in those services that will have been, I'm oh, sorry, um, that the productivity improvements services will be delivered by the local ICT guys that would have been upskilled by the big ICT corporations jointly with the digital experts in the region, the visitor information centres, the LTOs. So pretty much the main difference that what we haven't done before in the industry is talk to the large ICT corporation and get them interested 
to market at camp time, spring training camp time. Regain your work life balance. Our issue was uh, lifestyle businesses and sustaining customer relationship and looking at solution around that. We chose to look at um, the caravan camping industry. Within that industry is a large component of that is the grey nomad, grey nomad market. Now, the grey nomads are the most connected to technology um, and surprisingly so. They've got the money, they've got the transport, and they've got the iPads, the solar, the air pollution, they've got everything happening. What they're doing um, is they're travelling on their journey, and these are journeys that can be like six months, 12 months, two years. Um, they're staying not only connected to their families, but they are involved in clubs, like combined caravan clubs and everything. That's their generational thing. Um, they're sharing their experiences with everyone else in that club. So they've gone to a rest area. They've um, pulled up. They've um, let the family know where they are. And then they've looked at everyone else in the rest area. And they've all come together in the middle. They all start talking about their experiences. Before you know it, they're relaying it back to everyone else in the club who's coming behind them, coming on that same journey type of thing. So we sort of think that maybe um, some focus groups or something could be put around this grey nomad market and um, using their model into and turning that into some sort of business solution for the smaller tourists and operators as well. Not so much the caravan industry, but your little cabins or, or whatever. It's almost like their own trip advisor. That's what it is. Yeah. All right. Now, let me just try and quickly summarise around the room um, what the groups have said. I don't know if we're going to be able to do it, but the table, the first table, is talking about um, the need for tourism businesses to have a much deeper understanding of the customer and the customer's preferences and we talk about a concierge type um, platform or service um, on their uh, entry or engagement with the business. So it's a thing of justice, but um, um, something. Number two was um, a broader support tool for tourism operators, particularly around raising the Talk about a triple prize type platform for tools and businesses to get an understanding of the three elements. All of the advice you take in terms of the services to get the prize and check in terms of So the crowdsourcing um, platform to tourism operators to actually understand who's out there in school and the difference. We already have the thing that we're going to be able to do in So that would be utilised um, and features the need to take this back. So that's number two. Number three um, talked about expanding the digital coaching program, which has been successful, successfully delivered by GQ today, um, particularly broadening it out amongst regional Queensland and more, more regional meters, um, increasing the level of work prices and businesses to begin Four was talking about, the fourth table was talking about Queensland tourism payments gateway platform which would have multi-functional purposes and would have a very strong uh, business intelligence and a look element to it to allow tourism businesses and regional groups to actually make that data otherwise it would make better business decisions at the business level and the regional level. And that sort of meshed with the table discussion over here about um, big push on open data, how do we actually move that in the tourism industry? Um, not to tourism operators and regional tourism bodies to make better business decisions. Information part of them, information part of that for business decision making at the business level and at the regional level particularly. Um, this discussion here about um, the, the, the growth in open source technology, open source platforms being more dynamic and more popular for life, and particularly with the move towards cloud based platforms and technologies and storage. Storage platforms. Um, second last group talked about the spring clean work life balance initiative, um, and particularly I think what we were making is to get some of the more larger ICT companies to get 
their mind in this space. And obviously they have partner relationships with small assets and things. We have a lot of this today. And the last one was talking about the, um, the, the lessons learned from the grey nomad market, the way that they engage with technology, share their experience, how could that be happened by those learning to do that in other areas of marketplace for the Basically, technology in the pub is what I heard. Uh, that one being, <laughs> and, and there was this, this whole concept of the, the Queensland Tourism kind of gateway, uh, built through TripAdvisor, and, and all my, that sense of puts bringing people together. So, what's interesting to me is I really see three things coming out of what you've been saying today. The first is around the engagement on the solutions. What you've been saying, what I've been hearing you say, is that we need to invest in that collaboration. That is not that common itself. That it really is about leveraging our existing networks. It's about champions and mentors uh, and actually trying to create a space where we can bring licensee and tourism together to actually provide solutions. Uh, and that's particularly how we can do Second, I suppose the big thing that I've been coming out to the first session was around personalising and tailoring. As a major industry. Now that can be tailored on a cheap traffic basis, in terms of where you are. It can be tailored in terms of pre arrival information, tailored in terms of key overseas markets, based on culture, or indeed key demographics like more markets. There is a desire that that tailored information could be used uh, to you know, visitors to push out information to them as part of their choices, but also by staff in the industry who are sort of concerned to be using this sort of help move them through. And I suppose it seems like what brings the first thing, which was engagement model, the second thing is around those kind of ideas and how we can do them together, is this concept of almost like a, a commons, creating commons where we can bring together the two sectors to look at some open source ideas and access product. It seems to be a sense that, you know, proprietary solutions are great, but also there might be some kind of user solutions that can work. Successful by the industry and encourage that for a long time. Uh, I think Mark said that at the start that too, it was you know, it's worse, regional, and small, and time poor, and I think that's right. And to some extent, we're giving something to our range of ways to get around that and actually get the most out of where the industry is going. That's my brief summation of my three points that you've been. The only points that you want to raise in this last minute? Yes. Reduce your costs of mortgage for these transactions so they're absolutely well. Any other last comments that we'd want to make? Look, can I just say, I hope this has been a fantastic start. I think we've got people in the room talking, that have some really practical and good ideas coming to We do need to put effort into taking this forward as we go along in some way. So, what's going to happen now today? Well, we're going to send you all the results next week. So, we're going to get the information. So you had the option of joining a working group to take the top ideas forward and this piece of paper on the table where you can put the details down and then back in touch. The feedback you've provided today is incredibly useful as the as government and its industry partner keeps it going over the digital strategy for the This is absolutely vital. 
But as I say, it seems like these connections are coping with the very critical things, which they've simply been enabled by the pressure that is being put out there. So, I just say thank you so much to the teams who organised today. I can just give a round of applause up there. Table posts and the sky. Uh, one of the things this government is very keen on is government agencies working together to build tourism. Uh, and certainly, Park and Science and Innovation and the Department of Tourism are working closely together to make sure we do the most of the industry. But also, I'd like to thank you, as I said at the beginning, you're all busy, you're all in the businesses. Thank you so much.